this tutorial is going to be about how to dodge and burn uh, in a more uh, sort of professional way than what is sort of traditionally done. Um, and in order to do that, um, we need to be able to target different layers of luminosity, basically uh, the lights and darks of a photo and be able to paint within those darks and lights um, without muddying the overall image up. So uh, first off, like this, this is sort of how um, people tend to dodge and burn now. Uh, they will create, uh, if you hold Alt and click on a new layer, it'll give you an option to, um, some options. Uh, so they'll set it to soft light. They'll fill it with a soft light neutral, 50% uh, gray. And um, then hit OK. And then they'll, they'll proceed to basically paint with all the way black or or all the way white uh, with no color in it, basically. So they would paint, this is total white. Uh, and they would, they would go to um, a section of a photo that they want to sort of lighten up. Oops. And uh, with a very rounded brush at about 10% opacity, uh, they'll sort of paint in some of that light that they want to lighten things up, or they'll go to, say, this cloud and kind of, you know, paint, just sort of hit the highlights on it. They'll go up to the moon and you know, sort of like paint in white, and, you know, they'll just kind of like hit all the highlights, but it's, but if you can, if you see when I'm painting over these two, it's not, it's not precise and it's not obeying the luminosity over all of the values. And so it, what it's doing is muddying up the, uh, the tonal range, the dynamic range of the photo. Um, so I'm going to just delete that layer. And so the first step of that, the, the whole, the overall concept of painting with white or dark on a uh on a neutral tone it's with uh, a neutral layer um and setting the the mode for the layer to soft light or that that's that's a start but what we want to do is target what we paint to in that layer so uh create that layer that this will be the the darks layer might as well type that in uh, I'll do rock darks and um, the other thing is to to keep some of that keep some of the saturation and color accuracy um, I usually like to alt select um, the the uh, color value that I want to work from, and then uh, I will set it close to black, but not all the way black, so that it has some of this color in it. And uh, so, so what I'll first do is try to just target the areas that I want to kind of darken up. Uh, in as specific a way as I can. So painting with a soft brush, 10% opacity. I'll just sort of paint in some of the darks a little bit more. What I'm wanting to do overall for the image is um, create some contrast here between the darker side of this rock and the brightness shining onto the rock from over uh, where the sun's setting over here ish so i just kind of want to like darken that up a bit hit this 
and like as you can see it's also darkening up the the lights that I don't really want to to darken so we're going to address that here in a second and there we go so that's what I've painted in and as you can see um these lights are getting kind of muddied up and just sort of darkened but we might want to keep those sort of popping out a bit more and uh you'll see the lighter elements of the photo back here are getting kind of muddied up and in general you just don't want that going on in in, in a photo uh because it, it basically just removes that sort of professional perfectly sharp and controlled color range uh, edges and things remaining sharp when they should stuff like that okay so what we need to do i'm going to turn that layer off for now so that we're working with the the original image and what we want to do is create some what they call luminosity masks um, we're going to do these manually, although there's different tools like uh, Raya Pro that I definitely recommend by Jimmy McIntyre that uh, is, makes all this a lot quicker, um, but it does cost some money. I think it's like 45 bucks or something like that. So I want to show you how to kind of do this stuff manually so that you know kind of what's going on also. Um, and so like I said before, we kind of want to be targeting we want to be targeting where we're painting our lights and darks and in order to do that we need to create different masks with uh, with different tonal ranges uh, that we will use the light to dark to paint into the the whitest white being uh, where most of the painting goes um, in in, uh, in a dodge and burn layer and the darks being where it's painted least. So in order to do this, uh, hold control and click the RGB channel and then hit uh, this button here to save that selection as a new channel. And now that it's a new channel, um, what we want to do is create different selections of different value ranges. Um, and it'll make more sense once you see how we use them in, in uh, a mask for a dodge and burn layer. So um, in order to do that, we just need to know some hotkeys because uh, that'll be the easiest. Uh, so when you when you control, let me deselect that. So when you control click a channel, it selects that channel at, and creates an actual selection um, that can be applied as mask and stuff like that. And then uh, what we want to do is step down to uh, the next sort of level of brightness. So we'll hold Control Shift and Alt click it again and then create a, a new selection from that and what you'll see is it creates oh, basically one darker one sort of level darker and we'll do that one more time that's probably all we're going to need on that okay so now you can see that it is this is basically a channel that only has the absolute brightest brights. Uh, so what that would let you do is basically if you created a clipping mask on uh, on a dodge and burn layer and you went to uh, dodge anywhere, if you were to paint anywhere here, you would it would barely show up. And, and then in the brightest areas, that would be the only areas that got the most sort of paint or, or light. Um, so that created, now we want to also create the opposite of that because what we want to be able to do is paint only 
in the shadows. So you, I only really want to be able to paint in the in the darkest uh, different layers of darkness in this in this rock and in the water here. So what I need to do is create a selection from this and invert that so that basically uh well let's just let you look at that. So we'll create a layer from that selection and so, so you're basically you're seeing the inverse. The darkest darks are, well, the the darks of the photo are are now being selected with white. And so we're going to do the same thing as we did for these. Control Shift Alt, or sorry, first start off with it selected, then Control Shift Alt Click, create another selection. Click this. Control Shift Alt make another to add to another selection and create it, the layer and okay let's see let's do even one more darkest darks only available so then you can see that like only the very the very darkest darks will be selected there if it's used as a, a layer mask Okay, so now that those are prepared, what we want to do is um, okay. Okay. Sorry, I had to fix that. Okay, so you can see here, this is where we painted our darks and, or where we started painting our darks. And now what we want to do is uh, apply a, uh, a, a mask to that based on the luminosity. And so we created these different, different sets of uh, luminosity ranges and we only want that m layer to affect the, the real darks. So I'm going to control click this to create a selection and then go back to the layer we want to apply the mask to, click it, and then click the add layer mask button here. And you'll see it change. So now we've only painted in the darks and we haven't affected the lighter areas. Um, so we haven't, we've basically effectively not muddied it up as much. This is without the mask. mask. Simple way to basically double the amount of darkness. Well, I'm not sure this will look that good, but you can just click and drag that onto the new layer. And if you wanted to modify that, you can just change the opacity of that new duplicate layer. So that's giving you more like, you know, 25% more darkness in those areas. So this is what we started with. And that's what we have now. So that's, that's basically how to uh, paint in using luminosity masks, how to paint in um, or burn in a photo uh, in a more effective way. Okay, so let's just do a few, let's hit a, a few more changes here. So let's like, so I'm creating another, another dodge and burn layer, 50% neutral gray. 
uh, setting the blending mode to soft light. And let's just see here. What would it be like to sort of paint in some more of this? I always use the brightest bright uh, version of a color. And sometimes I'll saturate a bit more just for fun to see what that does. Paint with 10% opacity. And we don't want these sort of hot spots. We only want it to affect the color. So we're going to just play with these techniques that we've kind of worked with with luminosity masks, but for uh, the brights of an image to see. So we can do so right now, this is just sort of a heavy handed approach, like general areas where we'd want it to be uh, dodged a bit more. I'm going to hit the, the water with a different a different mask uh, and a different set of layers. So this will just be the brightest brights for the sky. So I'm going to look through the um, different channels we made, and we kind of we want to limit those those painted areas to only the highlights. This one is slightly too light in the darks, and so uh, what that'll do is it'll let it'll let me basically paint too much uh, light into areas that shouldn't have it. So it'll let me do it'll let me paint here, and don't want that. So we kind of want to limit it a little bit more uh, in order to do sort of target a tonal range a little bit more precisely uh, you select what you know whatever whatever sort of brightness uh, values are closest to start with and then duplicate that and then hit control L to affect that that channel with uh, with levels so that we can kind of target the um, brightest brights in this in this case so we want to be able to just sort of affect bring up the darks okay Let's see what that gives us So control click it to create a selection using those that value range and then go back to uh, the highlight and apply it to it. Okay, so that is much better. Okay. So it's subtle, but this is this is sort of how you sneak up on on um and a better overall photo is it's slower it's a little it's a it's a little less heavy handed and the editing is takes longer it's a more nuanced but you know that's how you get the better results so kind of wanting to hit this rock uh with some more lights to kind of match lightness going on in the sky a bit and I kind of I'm also kind of wanting to emphasize the light direction more so I'm going to darken up the sky for this I don't think we're going to need to actually use a luminosity mask because we're just going to do a real light touch on it do 5% opacity
see, we might actually need to use a clipping mask here. Where's our luminosity mask? Because we don't want it to get muddy. So let's use that. Add it to a selection by control clicking it uh, in the channel editor and then voila. Okay, so now we can kind of paint the darks in with a little bit more impunity here. Not affecting clouds as much. Okay, cool. And just because I'm really wanting to I'm gonna but I like emphasize the moon a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that like ten percent opacity. Select the sort of main color, but get the brightest value and just sort of add a brightness hit to that. Nice little glow. Be too much. Yeah. Like it. Okay. And uh, let's do another sort of brightness hit to the right side of all of this. See if we have a Kind of right in that Let's modify this slightly. Control L to adjust the layers uh, levels. Okay the brightness so that it just lets us paint a bit more into it, but then change the dark so that the clouds don't get painted as much in this one. Control click it to select it, apply it to the mask. And then let's paint in a little bit more. A little less desaturated mainly wanting the brightness. We don't want to really saturate the photo anymore. It's already a lot of color. Basically just want to come at this so that we kind of emphasize where the light source is. And I've also emphasized this curve here down to a third. Okay. I'll take this down slightly. Okay. And then let's hit the lights on this rock and bring them up a bit. Closer to the front of it. It's almost like modeling. Like you're almost sort of, you're thinking about the objects in a more three-dimensional sense. Like and trying to emphasize them, but can it keep that three-dimensionality of of the image. Um, that's, that's what using luminosity masks is all about. So we're just going to create... Another soft light. 
Neutral gray, 50%. Okay. And I'm going to use the same same exact color that we used for the for the for the sun the sun's sort of color in the sky to hit the highlights of this just so that there's a similar mixture um, going on. So let's see here. It's about the brightness that I want. You can see how it muddies it up when uh, you paint all of the values and not target specific specific luminosities. All right. Am I getting carried away? Yeah. Let's do the. The water separate. All right. Now create a selection here. So we're thinking about how the darks are not are where none of our light is painted when we're painting it and we want the whites to be where we are painting okay try that so a little bit of water that we hit over here that'll get some a boost from what we painted this will get about a, a little bit of a boost but might not be enough we'll see control click that layer create a selection and then apply it to dodge and burn layer as a mask okay cool actually no, that's working we want it to be subtle Let's do the water. Might have to do it in two layers, we'll see. So let's let's know exactly what we're going to be excluding. Okay, and it looks like we need a custom. Range there, bringing up the whites so they're closer to all the way, but we want as much data still as possible. Okay, we're going to be painting in the shadows. The water. Control click. Like that and then I'm going to sample that so that we work from that color area and darken it up a bit more and I'm going to use 5% opacity so we can sneak up on it in general I like I like the corners of the photo or the corners of the composition to um, to kind of draw the eye into the photo as much as possible. So this is letting us paint in the dark areas, not really affect those lights.
Let's look at before and after. Now let's pop the whites a bit more. Oh. So the opposite direction. Now we want to select only the brighter whites. And this is basically like manually doing what uh, a similar thing to what a clar the clarity slider does. If you're familiar with Lightroom or um, the um, camera raw filter, uh, we're basically doing a manual version of that, um, which. Honestly, it's just the better way to do it, um, but it takes a lot more time. <laughs> Gotta be a perfectionist. Let's like that, actually. I'm going to modify that first. And... Control L to bring up, oh, deselect first. Control L on that channel. We only really want to affect the lights. Being careful not to paint any noise into the photo. Get, we don't want to exaggerate noise. Okay, Control, click it to Add that selection and create a mask with it. Okay, and then in general, I like to keep the highlights of water blue unless it's a very particular situation. I want to emphasize some of those peaches and pinks in the water here and the peaches over there. I'll do that with a different. Different dodge and burn layer. Okay. So always want to be focused on the overall balance of the photo. This is more dramatic now, which we like, but um, there needs to be similar and sort of matching darkness up here, I think. So good way to do that. I'm just going to reduce some of that, that burn a bit. And then go back to this. I hate how Windows does that. Okay. Um, so let's just darken up the sky a bit and don't need it to be as saturated.
creating another dodge and burn layer. Um, you know, you can create an action just so that it's a single, single click or keyboard command. But um, for the sake of the demo, I just want to kind of reinforce how to do it over and over. Circle approach. Too much. Too much. All right. So now we have dodged and burned this thing. So here is the original. And here is, after dodging and burning, the luminosity masks. Control Shift Alt and E or the equivalent on a Mac creates a layer based off of all of the visible layers below it. It just makes this easier to um, check. Okay, and see we'll throw in a little extra here at the end so that that was all the dodging and burning um and i'm just going to sharpen up the photo a little bit uh, but i'm going to sharpen it up in a less destructive way so what we do for that is we do that same thing i just did Control shift alt and e or the equivalent on a mac and then set this to soft light. You'll see that it gets really, really burny. Don't worry about that. Then go up to filter on that layer and go to other and then do a high pass on it. 2.8 usually works pretty well. Um, anything more than that, you'll start to see things get a little too gross. Um, and the goal of sharpening is to basically create micro contrasts that that people can't see but they subtly perceive and what those micro contrasts do to the person's eye uh, and and they perceive the overall photo as sharper and it's really easy to go overboard and over sharpen um, and you'll notice you'll notice it once you start um, once you start doing it and and and, uh, and really sneaking up on the ideal sharpness, you'll start to see it in other people's photos. You'll start to see how how heavy-handed they were, and how that has sort of dragged their quality down. And what sometimes is uh, would would be really great photos. Okay, so hit OK on that. So, can you see the difference? I'm going to add a duplicate of that layer. Another cool thing about sharpened layers is that Uh, it's not really prevalent in this photo, but when you have, uh, you know, you'll see it most when there's like a ridge line or something of mountains uh, where, and, and it's a high contrast, sharp edge. You'll start to notice that, um, that sharpening kind of 
starts to fall apart a little bit and and what can help is to create a mask and basically on that sharpen layer and just sort of paint away 100% black and you can kind of paint away some of the more like problematic areas that are sh that have been like over sharpened or something like that um see that right there like that might be within acceptable bounds but you kind of this is already feels sharp here and so um you kind of don't want that haloing and fringing that can start to show up when something gets over sharpened when it's a too high contrast okay so there we go beginning and so uh hopefully this tutorial was uh was helpful for you and uh, there's lots more to come. I'm going to be doing some m more uh, premium tutorials uh, that will um, uh, patrons uh, on my Patreon get at the $5 a month level, along with a bunch of discounts on print sales and desktop wallpapers and things like that. Or it'll be available on uh, theskyfolk.com um as a an individual purchase uh, this tutorial uh, is a simpler tutorial less in-depth um, but look for a if an in-depth uh, night sky and milky way tutorial coming around the uh, the beginning of march so i hope you like this tutorial and uh hopefully it gives you a little bit uh, more direction on how to handle dodging and burning.